Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Boy, do I have a video for you today. It is no secret that I have an unexplained, slightly terrifying, and moderately questionable affinity for Nerf guns. And I have been boasting about my collection for what must feel like ages now. You guys have seen my Nerf gun closet arrangement many times throughout my videos now, whether it be a deliberate show-and-tell session or a discreet appearance in the background of one of my videos. So this weekend, I finally took up on my high claims of Nerf gun grandeur and decided to build my own arsenal. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the construction of my Nerf gun closet. Let's first go back in time a bit. My original method of madness to storing these fine works of art was hanging them in my closet. Yes, the same closet I keep my clothes in. Well, here's the thing. This worked for two months before I got sick and tired of looking at it every time I went to go and get dressed. So, as you can imagine, it was time for a change. Of course, when you want to redo your closet, there's only one place left for for you to go. Ikea. My mother and I descended upon Ikea with a hunger for furniture. Did I want a cabinet? Did I want shelves? Did I want a drawer? A closet? A chest? The devil himself? No one knows. After hours of diligent searching, my mom and I found the perfect vessel to store my weapons of mass destruction. It was a cabinet, beautifully shaped and tastefully crafted. It was called the and it was perfect in every way, shape, and form. Now, was my mother okay with this? No, but she never is, and I'm the one paying for it, so it doesn't matter. But nevertheless, the two of us struggled to lug these thick packages onto our trolley, and then into the car, and home we were headed. Once I got home, I faced my first obstacle. I was ambushed by Satan's henchman, the potato bug. Now these little critters just love to call my house their home. And yes, they were here first, but it wouldn't hurt for them to knock next time they come wandering in. My dad was willing to grant mercy, however, so he saved the little beast and yeeted him off the porch. At this point though, I was starving, so I changed into some workout gear because, oh, I take this stuff seriously, and I channeled my inner Gordon Ramsay. I found half an acorn squash in the fridge and thought, yes, I can do something with this. And then I found a knife and thought, yes, I can do something with this. And finally, I found some mozzarella cheese and thought, yes! I can do everything with this! Anyways, first step was to preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I removed the squash's guts rather violently and cut that darn thing into thin strips lengthwise. Be careful while you're doing the step. The acorn squash is rather difficult to cut. And if you cut yourself, you might just get acorn squash cancer and grow acorns out of your butt. I grabbed some aluminum foil and covered a baking sheet. Using all my brain power, I then did some mental gymnastics to make sure all of my slices fit onto the same baking sheet. I then sprayed the squash with some olive oil because I think that's what Jamie Oliver would do. And then I sprinkled it with some salt. I found some garlic salt in my cabinet, so I used some of that too. Once that's done, you set your timer for 25 minutes and plop them in the oven. Now, how you pass the time is up to you, but I scrambled one egg, ate that egg, and cried my heart out to the Call Me By Your Name soundtrack. But you better not let that squash catch you with your pants down. When your pig screams, it's time to remove the squash from the oven. I have to admit, I lost a couple men in action here, but it was good nonetheless. Something else I probably should have done but didn't think about was oil the baking sheet itself. Let me just say it was a mess to take these off the pan. They were stuck like super glue. Now was the time that you violently shred some cheese. This is optional, but I love cheese, so I used some of it. I sprinkled it over my pile of squash, and I have to say the results were quite appetizing. Anyways, let's get back to the cabinet fiasco. So the boxes for my cabinet now rested in my entryway, and it was only a matter of getting it up three flights of stairs. I enlisted the help of my parents and the three of us made it up to the second floor. And then the extraction process began. In an effort to avoid a brain meltdown, I opened up both packages at the same time and organized all the pieces by size. I was not about to get lost in the sauce while building this cabinet. After struggling with cardboard for 20 minutes, I had extracted all the cabinet's appendages and set them up outside my room. It was time to start building. I cleaned out this corner of my room and rearranged some of the furniture. Then, to get in the zone, I put on my headphones and got to building. This gizmo had 40 steps to it, which is excessive if you ask me. The first few steps took stupidly long for some reason, but the next few went by at light speed. At this point, I would like to mention something about IKEA furniture. IKEA likes to do this thing where the holes you're supposed to put the screws in aren't actually holes for screws, they're just markings, if you will. There's no ridges for your screw to go in, if you know what I mean. So you have to manually force in the screws yourself without an electric screwdriver because the wood is but quality and it will absolutely tear right through it. Obviously my spaghetti arms were not meant for this activity so my hands were wrecked trying to screw in those darn screws in the hunk of wood. <sighs> 
I envy the ambidextrous. My right hand is trashed. It's cramped up like seven times within the last like two minutes, but that's the price you pay when you have an Ikea addiction anyways. So not gonna lie, I've done a lot. I've created half a crib and almost locked myself in like three times. We're like 10 steps in, so only 30 more to go. So I'll keep you guys updated. And then I charged forward. At around step 20, my dad decided to step in and help. Things went much faster and I pretty much took the back seat. We were doing well. We tag teamed it. Efficiency was our middle name. I read the manual and my dad carried out the steps. Some honorable mentions. The back panel of this cabinet is held with 33 individual nails. When I read in the manual, that this cabinet required 33 nails, I almost had a heart attack. But we got through it, and it actually went by really quickly. My dad did not let me touch the hammer through fear of self-amputation, but we won't talk about that. But things were not all merry for so long. We soon realized that the doors to this closet did not close fully and symmetrically for God knows what reason. So ensued the madness of trial and error to try to fix this issue. A screw tightened, a hinge loosened. My dad fiddled with the cabinet ad nauseum. In the end, the darn thing just wouldn't close properly, so we just gave up and blamed it on Ikea. Other than that, however, it was finished and it looked magnificent. The cabinet was complete. It was massive and I could hide in it. Is there a risk that it could tip over and crush me? Maybe, but we won't talk about that. The battle, however, was far from over. We now had to find a way to hang my weapons in the cabinet. Well, guess what? I was prepared. I didn't mention this, but I actually purchased two pegboards while we were at Ikea in advance because I foreshadowed that this might be an issue. The idea sounded great in my head. What could possibly go wrong? Well, I made a very rookie mistake. I forgot to measure the pegboard. Did it fit inside my cabinet? Nope! So I had to improvise. I found this not dangerous at all saw type of thing, which I used to cut off a good 1.5 inches from the pegboard. Did it look rough, janky, and ratchet? Yes, but it got the job done. Then it was only a question of fastening this thing to the back of my cabinet. I used these temporary hooks to hang it up. The only thing left now was to put my Nerf guns on this pegboard. I emptied out my closet so that it was devoid of all my guns, and laid them out on the floor before me. About 30 minutes later, it was finished! Along the back, I had all my Nerf guns neatly hung for optimal grab-and-go options. Then, this little cubby. On top, I had my tactical vest, my fire bandana, and my protective glasses. Then, directly underneath, all my extra ammo. Nerf gun ammo literally runs away from you, so you better have extra. And finally, I have my extra appendages for my guns. Also worth mentioning, my Cat Piss Everdeen bow and arrow. May the odds never be in your favor, idiot. At this point, it was already 5 p.m., so my parents and I decided to go out for dinner. We went to this restaurant owned by Gordon Ramsay's civil brother, and I have to say, it was delightful. First off, the menu. Everything they served looked wonderful. I could barely choose! There were pizzas and pastas and everything in between, including smashed potatoes! Not mashed potatoes, smashed potatoes. I can just imagine some yahoo in the kitchen absolutely laying it on those innocent taters. Back to dinner. Now, we rarely go out for dinner, so I made sure to make this one count, if you know what I mean. It was all or nothing. We started by ordering some garlic flatbread. It was very garlicky and breadful. It also gave me PTSD from, oh, oh no. No, 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 no. Next, the main course. Like I said before, we went all out. My mom and I ordered a margarita pizza, while my dad ordered a mushroom pizza. It took a while, and he was not okay with that. My pizza was paper thin, and it had a lot of tomato sauce, but I let that slide. I finished it in a solid 15 minutes, and after, I felt 72 weeks pregnant. And that was it, my dudes! That's the story all about how I built my own Nerf gun closet. Was it time wasted? Hell no. Dare I say, was it time well spent? Hell yes. And as I sit here eating my dinner and editing this video, I can't help but think about how prepared I will be when the zombie deer come knocking at my front door with the intent of eating me for dinner. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed yourself and I will see you in the next one.